Okay, so this is going to look at creating reports in Microsoft Access. The reporting function is very powerful, but there are certain limitations. Yes, it's useful for your DBA and for the end users who have um, Microsoft Access. But if you're developing a report for someone who doesn't have Microsoft Access, you're developing it for someone um, who uses, say, Excel or Word, you're probably better off just exporting the, the data and then designing the report externally. In other words, design it right in Excel or design it right in Word as opposed to trying to export the report from uh, Access because I've found mixed results at best. Things just don't export the way you would think they would. Um, so you may want to consider that if the report isn't meant to be used internally to access, that you're sending it out to people who don't use access, uh, you may want to uh, create it elsewhere. But for people who do have Microsoft Access, uh, reports can be very useful. So since this is not a data entry tutorial, I just created a uh, short table with some test information. All you really need to know is that there's a transaction date a customer name and a transaction amount. So how do we create the report? Go to create, choose blank report. Go to view, choose design view. Now unlike, for, unlike forms, there are actual multiple parts to the report. There's a page header, which means if this report stretches on multiple pages, what's up here will happen over and over again. Also there's a page footer. You could also come up with a report header. So there's, uh, there's, there's these specialized sections that the forms don't have. Also, it's important to note, whereas a form is what you see is what you get, with a report, that is not the case. That basically, this detail section is going to be repeated for each and every record. So you'll see what I mean in a moment. So first, we need to associate a table with this report. So go to Home. Actually, go to Design, go to Property Sheet. Make sure you've got the upper left corner selected so that you're linking it to the report. Click on the drop down and choose Table 1. That's the only table we've got. Now that that's been done, you can come here to Existing Fields, and now they're available. So we're just going to do Transaction Date, and make sure you're putting this in the Detail section. Customer name, and then transaction amount. Now, watch what happens. This is nowhere near complete, but I want you to see what happens if you uh, just call it a day. See all that blank space? That's because of all the blank space we left in the design. So, whereas with a form, you see it once and that's it, whereas this has multiple instances. You know, for each and every record, that space gets repeated for each and every record. So it's not really a what you see is what you get approach. So let's go back to design. Now the other thing is that transaction date, customer name, and transaction amount gets repeated every single time. So you don't really want it there. So although you want this, the actual fields in the detail section, these labels, you really want them in the page header. That way they get displayed at the top of the page, and that's it. So what you can do is you can just delete, delete, delete. And we're going to expand out the page header because we're going to do several things with this, actually. So this is just a label. So you can click on that, create a label, and call this transaction date. And if you want consistency of size, you can copy that, paste it, and then just put in the next one. Customer name. Copy, paste, and you can put in amount. 
Now with reports, formatting is uh, very, very important. So like right now, amount is off to the left. It won't be lined up with this. So you're going to have to decide, do you want fields centered? Because if I shrink this, it doesn't change the fact that it's still off. I would still need to align it. So uh, when you're designing reports, you really do have to think about a lot about aligning uh, alignment, not to mention that if you're dealing with a value, this number may flex. And so um, you're going to have to think about exactly how you want it to get lined up. Do you want it lined up center? Do you want a left align? That kind of thing. All right. So now take this and just shrink this up and watch how much better this looks. There. So you don't have all that extra space. Maybe a little bit, but you don't you don't want this to be a, a solid wall of text. You want there to be a little bit of spacing. And now this is only written once. So you don't have the redundant uh, titles anymore and you've gotten rid of that extra space. So that's really the basics of the report. Uh, we used a table. If say the table is really huge and you only wanted a subset, like maybe customers who have canceled, you want to get rid of them and not have them in the report, um, you could do that. So you would create a query. And then when you come to the property sheet, The query would be listed here. Since we only have a table, only the table is listed. If you had a query, query would be listed there too. So you could use a query for a subset. Now we want to do some conditional formatting. So let's take transaction amount. Let's go to format and let's go to conditional formatting. We're going to click on new rule. And we'll leave as a top choice. Check values in the current record or use an expression. So field value is, so that's good. We want it to be equal to. And here we're just going to go through some of the various built-in functions. One is called dmax. Which, oops, let's try that again. dmax. Basically, this is the maximum value in this uh, field. So you actually have to spell this out. So the field is trans underscore amount, and it's stored in table one. And you have to choose the formatting. Let's make that, say, a blue color. And then we click on OK. And then we click on OK to exit this. Watch what happens. We go back to home, we view, and now, just as that rule says, the highest one is highlighted in blue. Now what we want to do is we want to add more rules. So let's go to back to format. You're just going to keep going back between format and home. Conditional formatting, new rule, Field value is equal to, and now we're going to do D min. Might as well because we did D max. So this is going to show you the lowest value. So again, we have to type it out trans underscore amount, comma, table one. And then click on OK. Actually, sorry about that. we got to choose formatting. So uh, if it's the minimum, let's make it red. Do OK. Do OK. Home view. Now the lowest is red, and this one is still blue. So uh, they're not fighting each other. Those two are... Um, I don't want to quite say mutually exclusive because technically you could have only one value. And uh, so you wouldn't have it be both colors. It performs these. There's an order of operation. So realistically, those two should be mutually exclusive. But yes, there is. Uh, it is possible that you only have absolutely one value for some reason. 
like maybe it's um, a donation and everyone donated the same amount. Okay, so let's go to format. And when we go to conditional formatting, rules applied in this order. So it goes for the max first and then it goes for the min. Again, in this case, really doesn't matter because they should not be the same. But that is something to be mindful of. We have a value that might overlap. Now let's do one that can overlap. We've done max, we've done min. Let's do average. So new rule. Field value is greater than AVG for average, and then in this case, we only have to declare the, the uh, field name. We don't have to go into the table as well, the table's name as well. So trans underscore amount, and we'll make these say green because they're above average. Actually, let's use that green. And then we click OK. So the highest one should be above average. It inherently is. OK. So no shit about it. It inherently is. But it won't be green. It'll be blue. So this is the order in which it gets applied. So we do OK. Back to home view and see. 325, since it's the highest, it's above average, but it's still blue. Okay, so we took care of min, we took care of above average, we took care of max. And there's just so much you could do with conditional formatting. So what I'm going to do is I'll just leave this open as far as uh, if you have questions about other conditional formats that you'd like to see. Like is there a comparison between other values? Things like that, just let me know and I'll see what I can do. But the last thing that we're going to do is I mentioned we created some extra space up here. And the reason why is in the page header, we're going to create a key. So let's do label or a legend, whatever it's called nowadays. We'll say key. And copy this. Paste. Line it up with that one. And this will say max. We go over to, no, let's just go over to home, click on this, and see how we got the recent colors down here? I know for a fact that I chose blue because it says recent colors. Let's copy this, paste it. Notice it keeps the formatting color, although we're not going to want it in this case. Min. Again, we come here. Recent color, red. And one more time, we'll copy that. Paste it. And this one, we'll do... It was green, I believe we said average. Now it's more of a proper report. So key, max is blue, red is min, green actually is above average. And we can shrink that in a bit and move that over. There you go. So blue max, red min, green above average. Maybe you could do another one for below average, the ones that are in yellow. And that's because uh, it, it, you could say, well, why not just sort it that way? Well, A, you could, but at what point are you looking at the average? Because some of these numbers are very close. So even if you could sort this from top to bottom, you know, greatest to lowest or lowest to greatest, still certain ones you'd be a little bit vague about, such as average. Is it above average? Also, there might be a reason why you can't change the sort or you shouldn't change the sort. So this way you can have that key to bring out that information. And like I said, this is just the tip of the iceberg. There's so much you can do with conditional formatting. Um, 
So let's leave it for there. Um, but if you have other conditional formatting that you'd like to see, let me know. Like you could do, say, data validation, like the length of a value. Like maybe uh, there's a limit to the name. The name can only be, say, 10 characters. So we could highlight one that has more than 10 characters, something like that. Okay, so that should do it.